This is the story of Gladys Knight, a true Motown sensation who graced the music scene in the late 60s and early 70s. You know, with people really thinking well of me and what I've been doing for all this time, and I'm just grateful. She wasn't just a star. She was the radiant force behind the beloved Gladys Knight and the Pips, a family ensemble from Atlanta. But beyond the spotlight, Gladys Knight's life was a symphony of triumphs and trials, including the heartache of multiple failed marriages. Today, we're rolling out the red carpet to unveil the extraordinary life of this legendary artist. Join us on a journey that will take you from the heights of her talent to the depths of her personal struggles here on Gladys Knight is now about 80, how she lives is sad. Brace yourself for a story that's as powerful as her music, filled with resilience, passion, and the enduring spirit of a true icon. Early Days and the Path to Music Gladys Maria Knight, often referred to as the Empress of Soul, was born on May 28, 1944 in Atlanta, to her parents, Merrill Woodlow Knight, who worked as a postal worker, and Sarah Elizabeth Woods. She grew up alongside her siblings, including a sister named Brenda and a brother named Merrill Bubba Knight Jr. Unfortunately, they also faced the loss of another brother, David Billy Knight. She is a renowned American singer, songwriter, actress, and businesswoman who has left an indelible mark on the world of music and entertainment. With an illustrious career spanning several decades, Gladys Knight has achieved numerous accolades and distinctions. One of her most iconic achievements came as the lead singer of the family group Gladys Knight and the Pips, which consisted of her brother Merrill Bubba Knight and cousins William Guest and Edward Patton. Together, they created a musical legacy that resonates to this day. Despite her success in her career, Gladys Knight's journey through matrimony was marked by both joy and adversity. At the tender age of 16, she found herself pregnant and decided to marry her classmate and Atlanta musician, James Jimmy Newman, in 1960. Tragically, she experienced a miscarriage during this period. Despite this early setback, the couple went on to have two children together. However, their union faced significant challenges as Newman grappled with drug addiction, which ultimately led to his abandonment of the family when Gladys Knight was just 20 years old. Remarkably, they remained married for over 12 years until 1973, battling through tumultuous times. During their marriage, they welcomed a son named James Jimmy Gaston Newman III, born on August 13, 1962. Amid the difficulties they encountered, Gladys Knight made the courageous decision to step away from her music career temporarily. She retired from performing on the road to focus on raising their child, even as the Pips, her family's musical group, continued to tour independently. In November 1963, Gladys Knight and James Newman celebrated the birth of their only daughter, Kenya Maria Newman. The responsibilities of motherhood and the desire to provide for her growing family eventually led Gladys Knight back to her passion for recording and performing with the Pips. In the early 1960s, Gladys, James, and the Pips relocated to Detroit, where they embarked on a new chapter in their lives. They settled in the prestigious Sherwood Forest neighborhood on Sherborne Road on Detroit's west side. Gladys Knight also resided on Lal Avenue for a period, ensuring her children received a quality education by sending them to Goo Catholic grade school. However, the challenges in their marriage persisted. After enduring a separation that spanned seven years, Gladys Knight made the difficult decision to divorce James Newman in 1973. Tragically, he passed away a few years following their divorce, marking the end of a tumultuous chapter in her personal life, trying out a second marriage. In 1974, after the challenges of her previous marriage, Gladys Knight found love again and married Barry Hankerson in Detroit. Barry Hankerson was the creator of Blackground Records, a label that would later sign his niece, the talented R&B singer Alia, to a record deal. Together, Gladys and Barry welcomed a son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, into the world on August 1, 1976. However, their marital journey faced its own set of difficulties, and around 1977, the couple decided to relocate to Atlanta while the Pips, the musical group that Gladys was part of, 
remained in Detroit. Unfortunately, Gladys Knight's marriage to Barry Hankerson encountered serious challenges and ultimately came to an end in 1979. The separation led to a prolonged and emotionally taxing custody battle over their son, adding another layer of complexity to her personal life. Tragedy struck again in 1979 when Gladys Knight's son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, was kidnapped. Distraught by the disappearance of her child, she spared no effort or expense in her quest to find him, spending over a million dollars in her determined search. Amid the ups and downs of her personal life, Gladys Knight found herself in another marriage in 1995, this time with motivational speaker Les Brown. However, the challenges that life presented continued to impact her relationships, and she and Les Brown eventually separated and divorced in 1997. Gladys Knight's journey also included a battle with gambling addiction that spanned more than a decade. In the late 1980s, she faced a significant financial setback, losing $660 in a single night at the Baccarat table. Faced with the reality of her addiction, she made the courageous decision to seek help and joined Gamblers Anonymous, a step that eventually helped her break free from the grip of addiction. Spiritual Evolution Throughout her life, Gladys Knight underwent a spiritual evolution. She had previously been identified as a Baptist, but later converted to Catholicism in 1997. Her spiritual path took another turn as she was baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as the Mormon Faith. This decision followed her son and daughter's departure from Catholicism to join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Notably, Gladys Knight's involvement in the church led to some light-hearted interactions with the church president, Gordon Hinckley. She humorously suggested that the congregation needed to infuse some pep into their music. To her surprise, President Hinckley agreed, leading to the formation of the Grammy Award-winning Saints Unified Voices Gospel Music Choir. Additionally, Gladys Knight took on a leadership role and led the B1 Choir at the B1 40th Anniversary Celebration of the Revelation on the Priesthood. During a significant phase of her career, Gladys Knight's son, Jimmy Newman, played a pivotal role in managing her career through his company, Newman Management Inc. However, tragedy struck when Jimmy Newman passed away from heart failure on July 10, 1999, at the young age of 36. His untimely death left a profound impact on the family. Jimmy Newman was survived by his wife, Micheline, and their children, including daughters Nastasia and Gabrielle, and sons Ron, Stefan, and Sterling. This loss was a deeply emotional and challenging period for Gladys Knight and her family. In 2001, Gladys Knight entered a new chapter in her personal life when she married William McDowell. The couple's union brought together their families, resulting in a large and extended family. Gladys and William share a combined total of 17 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren, creating a close-knit and vibrant family network. Divorce is undoubtedly one of life's most challenging experiences, and Gladys Knight, the legendary singer, knows this all too well. With not one but three divorces in her life, it's clear that she's navigated a tumultuous journey of love and loss. Each divorce carries its own weight of emotional turmoil, and for Gladys, dealing with three of them is solid proof to her resilience. The mental stress that comes with divorce is overwhelming. It's like unraveling the threads of a life once carefully woven together. The emotional toll can be immense, leaving scars that may never fully heal. The pain, heartache, and the feeling of failure can linger for years. Gladys Knight, as a public figure, has had to endure the added pressure of having her personal life scrutinized by the public and media. The spotlight intensifies the stress, making the process even more challenging. She's not just a talented performer, but also a human being with her own struggles. Divorce isn't just the end of a legal contract, it's the end of dreams, shared memories, and a vision of a future together. Even the most accomplished individuals face the same mental and emotional stress that many of us do when dealing with the complexities of love and relationships. What other things did she do? Beyond her personal life, Gladys Knight continued to be an active advocate for important causes. In 2017, 
She lent her support to raising funds for the Children's Learning Centers of Fairfield County. The fundraising event for the Children's Learning Centers of Fairfield County, hosted at the Palace Theater, was a resounding success. Co-hosted by Carol Ann Rell and Alan Calder, the event aimed to raise funds to benefit this essential organization. The $400,000 raised during this event played a key role in advancing the center's mission. Gladys Knight's involvement helped ensure that underserved children in Fairfield County had access to quality educational resources and support, setting them on a path toward a brighter future. But this was just one of the many instances where Gladys Knight lent her support to charitable causes. Her philanthropic efforts spanned various domains, including children, education, and health. She recognized the privilege and opportunity her fame brought and was determined to utilize it to make the world a better place. Gladys Knight's commitment to giving back mirrored her compassionate and generous nature. It wasn't a one-time endeavor, but a lifelong mission. Her involvement in charitable work was a testament to her belief in the power of positive change and the importance of extending a helping hand to those in need. Gladys Knight Axe endures as a shining example of how a celebrity can use their platform to create a lasting impact. Her story serves as a reminder that true greatness is measured not just by what one achieves, but by the positive changes they bring to the world. Her enduring spirit, remarkable voice, and dedication to making the world a better place will be celebrated for generations to come, leaving an indelible mark on both the world of music and philanthropy. Formation of the Pips Gladys Knight's musical journey began at a young age during the late 1940s and early 1950s. She discovered her love for singing while participating in her church choir, where her remarkable talent first began to shine. Her incredible vocal abilities soon caught the attention of a wider audience when she achieved a significant milestone at the tender age of eight on July 1, 1952. She triumphed on Ted Mack's The Original Amateur Hour TV Show Contest, a remarkable achievement that foreshadowed her future as a music legend. Notably, the formation of the iconic group Gladys Knight and Amp the Pips was rooted in a serendipitous event. During Bubba's 10th birthday party, the group's inception was an indirect result of a record player malfunction, which prompted Gladys, her brother Bubba, sister Brenda, and their cousins Eleanor and William Guest to perform together. Following this impromptu performance, they decided to form a formal group, a decision encouraged by Gladys's mother, Elizabeth Knight. The group settled on the name The Pips, drawing inspiration from the nickname of their cousin, James Pip Woods. As they honed their musical talents, they started participating in talent shows in their hometown of Atlanta, consistently winning these contests. Their success garnered the attention of music industry professionals, eventually leading to a record contract with Brunswick Records in 1957. While at Brunswick, the group released two recordings, although they did not achieve chart success at that time. Nevertheless, they began to gain recognition by opening for renowned R&B acts such as Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke. Despite initial setbacks, the group's journey continued. In 1959, Brunswick Records ended their contract, and during this period, both Brenda Knight and Eleanor Guest decided to step away from the Pips to focus on starting families. To fill the void, they welcomed new members into the fold, including another cousin, Edward Patton, and a friend named Langston George. This evolution marked the early stages of the group's storied career, which would go on to shape the landscape of soul music. In 1961, Gladys Knight and the Pips embarked on a pivotal phase of their musical journey. They recorded the song, Every Beat of My Heart, which was penned by Johnny Otis. At this time, the group did not have a record label to promote their music. Fortunately, a local Atlanta label named Huntum Records stepped in to champion their cause and managed to secure a distribution deal with VJ Records for the song's release. The group made a significant move to New York, where they seized an opportunity to audition for Bobby Robinson's Fury Records. However, they soon discovered that their hit song, Every Beat of My Heart, was already gaining popularity, yet they were not reaping the financial benefits they deserved. In response, 
Robinson decided to have The Pips re-record the song and release it under the Fury Records label. This strategic move led to both versions of the song making their mark on the Billboard charts. The Huntum slash VJ version of Every Beat of My Heart achieved a remarkable feat, climbing to number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Concurrent with this success, the group underwent a name change, adopting the moniker Gladys Knight and Amp the Pips. Their career continued to flourish, and they released the single Letter Full of Tears later in 1961, which became another top 40 hit. Building on this momentum, the group released a series of singles under the Fury Records label. These songs showcased their evolving sound and marked yet another chapter in the legendary career of Gladys Knight and the Pips. In 1962, Langston George, a member of the group, made his departure. During the same year, Gladys Knight decided to take a break from the group to start a family with her husband, musician James Newman. Her absence, though notable, was temporary, and she returned to the fold in 1964. This pivotal reunion led to the group signing with Larry Maxwell's Max label, marking a new chapter in their musical journey. Under the Max label, they collaborated with producer Van McCoy and released several noteworthy hits. Those songs released during their Max label era showcased their evolving sound and marked yet another chapter in the legendary career of Gladys Knight and the Pips. In 1966, Gladys Knight and the Pips joined the Motown Records roster, even though they didn't have an assured hit at the time. Despite being initially perceived as a second-string act by the label, they went on to achieve remarkable success with a string of major hit singles. Diana Ross and the Supremes invited them to tour as the opening act. Gladys Knight's soulful performance received an overwhelming reception, which somewhat overshadowed Ross's act. Barry Gordy, the head of Motown Records, later informed Knight that her act was giving his star act tough competition. In 1973, they made a major move by leaving Motown Records as they sought greater creative control and financial opportunities. Their decision to depart from Motown marked a turning point in their career, leading them toward even greater achievements. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Before we proceed, take a good look at this image. Every stare at this image screams, fierce, determined, strong-willed, in every sense of these words. Indeed, Gladys Knight is a story that could be acted out to pass across different lessons. And as we continue to journey into her life and its adventures, you will agree that this is true. If you could go back in time to witness one of Gladys Knight's legendary performances, which one would it be? Would it be her soul-stirring rendition of Midnight Train to Georgia, or perhaps a lesser-known gem from her vast repertoire? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Gladys Knight and the Pips Iconic Music and Achievements Gladys Knight and the Pips recorded a string of hits that captivated audiences worldwide during the late 1960s and the early 1970s. Their soulful harmonies and Gladys Knight's powerful vocals made them a household name. Notably, they recorded two Billboard Hot 100 No. 1 singles, Midnight Train to Georgia and That's What Friends Are For. The latter was a collaboration with music legends Dionne Warwick, Sir Elton John and Stevie Wonder. In addition to their chart-topping singles, the group achieved an impressive 11 number one R&B singles and released six number one R&B albums. Their remarkable success is a testament to their enduring talent and musical excellence. Gladys Knight's contributions to the music industry have earned her seven Grammy Awards, four as a solo artist and three with the Pips. Her exceptional artistry and vocal prowess have solidified her place among the most celebrated artists in history. Furthermore, two of her signature songs, I Heard It Through the Grapevine and Midnight Train to Georgia, have been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame for their historical and artistic significance. Beyond her musical achievements, Gladys Knight's impact extends to other realms of entertainment. She recorded the theme song for the 1989 James Bond film License to Kill, showcasing her versatility as an artist. Rolling Stone magazine recognized her as one of the hundred greatest singers of all time. In recognition of her outstanding contributions to the arts, Gladys Knight has received prestigious honors, including the National Medal of Arts and the Kennedy Center Honors. Additionally, 
She is an esteemed inductee into both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. Creative Independence and Continued Success After leaving Motown Records, Gladys Knight and the Pips embarked on a new phase of their career with a record deal at Buddha Records. It was with Buddha that they achieved one of their most iconic hits, Midnight Train to Georgia. Released in 1973, this soulful ballad written by Jim Weatherly quickly climbed the charts, reaching the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. This remarkable success not only solidified their reputation but also earned them a Grammy Award for Best Pop Performance by a duo or group with vocal. The song Midnight Train to Georgia remains a timeless classic, known for its emotional depth and narrative storytelling. It tells the story of a woman who leaves Los Angeles to join her man in Georgia, capturing the essence of love and sacrifice. The song's popularity endures, and it has been covered by various artists and featured in numerous films and TV shows. Gladys Knight and the Pips continued to release successful albums and singles during their time with Buddha Records. Hits like I've Got to Use My Imagination and Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me showcased Gladys Knight's powerful and emotive voice complemented by the Pips' harmonious backing vocals. Their music resonated with a broad audience, and they became known for their ability to convey powerful, relatable emotions through their songs. During their years with Buddha Records, the group achieved a string of chart-topping hits and solidified their status as one of the premier R&B acts of the era. They received critical acclaim, and their live performances were celebrated for their energy and soulfulness. Their success during this period further expanded their fan base and cemented their position in the music industry. How much is Gladys Knight worth? Having a career that spans over seven decades, her contributions to the music industry and her immense talent have not only earned her the love and respect of millions, but have also resulted in a significant net worth. So, how much is Gladys Knight worth? Their big break came when they signed with Motown Records in the 1960s, this marked the beginning of Gladys Knight's rise to stardom. Over the years, Gladys Knight and the Pips delivered countless hits that have stood the test of time. Songs like Midnight Train to Georgia, Neither One of Us Wants to Be the First to Say Goodbye, and Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me became classics. These hits not only earned her critical acclaim, but also contributed significantly to her wealth. Gladys Knight's net worth is estimated to be around $28 million, one of the key sources of Gladys Knight's wealth is her extensive discography. She has released numerous albums both as a solo artist and with the Pips. These albums have consistently sold well and continue to generate income through streaming platforms and music sales. Additionally, her powerful and soulful voice has earned her numerous awards, including seven Grammy Awards, which not only added to her prestige, but also increased her earnings. Very interestingly, Gladys Knight's success extends beyond the music industry. She's been involved in various business ventures, including owning and operating restaurants. You can say she is a really industrious woman. Her signature restaurant, Gladys Knight's Chicken and Waffles, became a famous spot, further contributing to her financial success. Yes, she has also been involved in real estate. She has invested in real estate properties and owned various real estate assets. Like many successful individuals, investing in real estate can be a strategic way to diversify one's financial portfolio and generate income through property ownership, rental income, and potential appreciation in property values. Real estate is a common avenue for many celebrities and entrepreneurs to grow their wealth and secure their financial futures. Furthermore, Gladys Knight has showcased her talent on the small and big screens. She has made appearances in movies and television shows, expanding her income streams. Her versatility as an entertainer has allowed her to tap into various aspects of the entertainment industry. Another significant source of Gladys Knight's wealth comes from live performances. Her stage presence and powerful vocals have mesmerized audiences worldwide. She's performed in numerous concerts and sold out shows, earning substantial fees for her appearances. Even in recent years, she has continued to tour and share her musical gifts with fans, further boosting her net worth. In addition to her music and entertainment career, Gladys Knight has made wise investments and managed her finances prudently. 
This has allowed her to maintain her wealth over the years and ensure a comfortable future. It's worth noting that while Gladys Knight's net worth is substantial, evidence of her talent, hard work, and dedication to her craft. She has not only enjoyed a successful career, but has also used her platform to give back to her community and support various charitable causes. Later, career and legacy. Gladys Knight's career extended far beyond her time with the Pips and Buddha Records. She enjoyed a successful solo career, releasing albums such as Miss Gladys Knight and Good Woman. Her solo work showcased her versatility as an artist and continued to earn her accolades in the music industry. Gladys Knight's enduring legacy in music is marked by her powerful and soulful voice. In addition to her music career, Gladys Knight has also made appearances in various television shows and films. She's known for her guest appearances on popular TV series and her role in Tyler Perry's film, I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Her charisma and talent have extended her impact beyond the music industry. Gladys Knight has received numerous awards and honors throughout her career, including the BET Lifetime Achievement Award and the NAACP Image Award. She's celebrated not only for her musical achievements, but also for her contributions to the broader entertainment industry and her philanthropic efforts. Gladys Knight's journey from her early days singing in the church choir to her rise as the Empress of Soul is proof of her unwavering passion and exceptional talent. With Gladys Knight and the Pips, she created a timeless and enduring body of work that continues to inspire and move people around the world. Gladys Knight's powerful voice and her ability to convey deep emotions through her music have earned her a permanent place in the hearts of fans and the annals of music history. Her legacy as a trailblazing artist, entertainer, and philanthropist continues to shine brightly, inspiring new generations and reminding us of the enduring power of soulful music. How does Gladys Knight live now, happy or sad? Gladys Knight celebrated her 80th birthday recently, marking a significant milestone in her life and career. As for how she lives now, it's essential to separate the concept of age from the quality of life. Being 80 doesn't necessarily mean living a sad or unfulfilled life. In fact, many individuals lead vibrant and active lives well into their later years, enjoying time with family and friends, pursuing hobbies, and even continuing their careers. Gladys Knight has had an incredible career in the music industry, known for her powerful voice and timeless hits. She may have chosen to focus on her personal life, spending time with her loved ones, or exploring new interests and passions. It's also possible that she's still involved in the music world, mentoring young artists, or making occasional appearances. The perception of whether her current life is sad or not is subjective and shouldn't be assumed based on age alone. It's important to remember that people have different preferences and priorities as they age. Some may embrace retirement and relaxation, while others stay active and engaged. What really matters is to celebrate her remarkable career and the possibility that she is enjoying her life in a way that brings her happiness and fulfillment, whatever that may be. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.